Fourth wave feminism is the resurgence of interest in feminism that began around 2012 and is associated with the use of social media. According to feminist scholar Prudence Chamberlain, the focus of the fourth wave is justice for women, particularly opposition to sexual harassment and violence against women. Its essence, she writes, is, "...incredulity that certain attitudes can still exist." Fourth wave feminism is, "...defined by technology." According to Kira Cochran, and characterized particularly by the use of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Tumblr, and blogs such as Feministing to challenge misogyny, issues that fourth-wave feminists focus on include street and workplace harassment, campus sexual assault and rape culture. Several scandals have galvanized the movement, including the Delhi Gang Rape 2012, Jimmy Savile Allegations 2012, Bill Cosby Sexual Assault Cases 2014, Isla Vista Killings 2014, Trial of G. N. Gomeshi 2016, Harvey Weinstein Allegations 2017, and subsequent Me Too Movement and Weinstein Effect, and the Westminster Sexual Scandals 2017. .Examples of fourth-wave feminist campaigns include the Everyday Sexism Project, Ni Una Menos, No more page 3, Stop Build Sexism, Mattress Performance, 10 Hours of Walking in NYC as a Woman, Hashtag Yes All Women, Free the Nipple, 1 Billion Rising, the 2017 Women's March, the 2018 Women's March, the Me Too Movement, and Time's Up. In December 2017, Time magazine chose several prominent female activists involved in the Hashtag Me Too Movement, dubbed, The Silence Breakers, as Person of the Year. History Journalist Pythia P. argued for the existence of a fourth wave as early as 2005, one focusing on social justice and civil rights, and in 2011 Jennifer Baumgartner dated the start of the fourth wave to 2008. Twitter, the social network most popular with the 18-29 age group, was created in 2006, making feminism more accessible and giving rise to hashtag feminism. Cochrane wrote in 2013 that many of the fourth wave's leaders were teenagers or in their twenties. By 2013, it was obvious that a new wave of feminist protests was taking place. When Wendy Davis staged her 13 hour filibuster in Texas in 2013 to prevent an abortion bill from passing, women showed their support by rallying around the Texas state capitol, and those who couldn't be there physically used the hashtag StandWithWendy. Similarly, women protested the often sexist questions directed at female celebrities by tweeting the hashtag hashtag AskHerMore. Ideas Cochran describes the fourth wave as focusing on sexual harassment including street harassment, workplace discrimination, body shaming, sexist imagery in the media, online misogyny, assault on public transport, and intersectionality, relying on social media for communication and online petitioning for organizing. Events and organizations included the Everyday Sexism Project, UK Feminista, Reclaim the Night, One Billion Rising, and A Lose the Lads Mags Protest. Books associated with the new wave include Men Explain Things to Me 2014 by Rebecca Solnit which gave rise to the term mansplaining, The Vagenda 2014 by Rhiannon Lucy Coslett and Holly Baxter based on their online feminist magazine, The Vagenda, launched in 2012, Sex Object, a memoir 2016 by Jessica Valendi, and Everyday Sexism 2016 by Laura Bates based on Bates' Everyday Sexism Project. Coslett's and Baxter's book aims to debunk the stereotypes of femininity promoted by the mainstream women's press. Bates, a British feminist writer, created the Everyday Sexism Project on 16 April 2012 as an online forum where women could post their experiences of everyday harassment. Criticism <coughs> 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 One criticism of fourth-wave feminism is that it depends on technology. As Ragna Rock Johns argued in Blue Stockings magazine in 2013, t he key problem that this fourth wave will face will be the disproportionate access to and ownership of digital media devices. The fourth wave is left with the inherent classism and ableism. Created by giving the biggest voice to those who can afford and use technology, it is also argued that when people participate in Twitter activism, they may not feel the need to do anything else to help the effort. In an article for NewUniversity.org, Alex Guardado argues that after contributing their say, people just 
continue on with their day, liking other posts or retweeting. Some may think of themselves as activists while never bothering to attend a single rally or extend their message beyond their Twitter fan base. Jennifer Simpkins of the Huffington Post argued in 2014 that fourth wave feminism had created a hostile, mean girls like atmosphere, in which women are more likely to tear each other down. I've actually never once been belittled and attacked by a man for believing in the cause of feminism. She states, but women are just about lining up to take a whack at the shoddy pinata of my personal tastes and opinions. Topic. Timeline Topic. See also Post-feminism Red tent meetings Me Too movement Topic. Notes Topic References Topic Further reading